Hi, welcome to Scott Place. In this video, I will be doing a first play of BIOS Genesis Second Edition. This is a heavy biological simulation game designed by Phil Eklund and published by Sierra Madre Games. Let's take a look inside the box. One of the um, first things I noticed about this when it arrived um, was that the the box feels extremely um, full. There's, there's no stuff moving around, um, and yeah, it is pretty full. Okay, so we have a bunch of plastic discs. These are quite nice, slightly frosted, um, good, three mil thick I think, um, in four different colours, which are your four player colours. Uh, we then have a whole set of cubes also in the four player colours. Um, I can see there are a couple of partial bits of cubes. I'm going to have to check the component counts on those, make sure I've got enough. Um, a set of, I think, uh, yeah, 12 dice. Um, these are quite nice, actually. They're well, they've got a nice um, finish to them. They're kind of frosted. Um, not sure if you'll be able to see that on the camera. Um, but they, yeah, they're probably about 8mm dice, I would hazard a guess. And yeah, as I said, they've got a, a nice frosted finish on them. Um, but other than that, they're just standard D6 dice and then we have a set of uh, little dome things um, again in what appears to be the four player colours a uh, pack of cards these look really nice I'll open those in a second and then let's have a look um, rule book um, Yeah, this is actually really quite a nice uh, glossy finish um, and slightly satin finish on the inside pages. A really nicely produced rule book. Um, I will say more about that in a minute. Uh, then we have some. Um, placards. Um, when I come to playing the game I'll sort of explain a bit more about what these do. Uh, they appear to be a fairly thin card and then this looks like a game reference and player aid um, which I know is going to be very useful when I um, Come to play the game. Um, that's basically it. Let's have a look at these cards, see what the uh, quality of those is like. Okay, these are, these are not bad. Um, looks like I've actually got two stuck together there. Yeah. Um, they are. They're not the thickest of cards. Um, I've certainly seen heavier card stock used, um, but they're not bad. They're a nice um, linen finish, uh, and I will I will be sleeving them. Um, the 
print quality is really nice and one of the things I, I like about this game and the um, other Phil Eklund games um, that are being produced at the moment is they have a really nice graphic design to them. Uh, it's a very clean, very modern and um, scientific kind of um, aesthetic to them. Um, let me see there, that's, this is one of the event cards um, and yeah that's it's very appropriate for, for this game and, and many of his other games because they, they are uh, as I said um, very scientific simulation games um, we also have let's see these are oh yeah these are the player cards so in the game you you play one of um, four very basic sort of proto life forms um, so we, we've got protein X or prion as the red player uh, protobacteria or malaria uh, as the yellow player, uh, cyanobacteria and salmonella as the green player, and a generic virus and viroid as the blue player. Um, and then we have a number of uh, mutation cards. Uh, those are not mutations. Um, which, yeah, when I come to play the game, I will explain a little more. Um, and they they have sort of two sides to them: a, a basic form and a, a more advanced form. Um, and yeah, whole bunch of those. All different all got very scientific names so uh, ribo switches hox genes uh, ribosome rna uh, cellulose cytoskeleton mrna quorum sensing mitochondria reverse citric acid cycle uh, and so on. As you see, the, the the names are all very scientifically based. And then we have some uh, basic life forms. Um, and again, these have two sides. Um, I'm not 100% certain on what the, the, the difference between the two sides are other than they're, they're a, a basic version and a more advanced life form um, and once again they are uh, scientifically named so you have trilobites uh, arthropod life form uh, flat worm, flatworms, sea stars, opabinia, lampshells, dickinsonia, seaweed and arrow worms and then the um, I think, or are these the or, oh, I'm not sure which are the uh, basic and which are the more advanced versions now. <laughs> uh, so we've got Eurypterids, I think, uh, mosses, mushrooms, snails, velvet worms, amphibians, earthworms, and insects. Uh, so I think, I think these are 
yeah, your simpler life forms with the blue um, header at the top, and then the other side has a sort of dark browny header, and that's the more advanced side, I think. Um, we then have four cards, yeah, four cards that um, represent um, four different landforms in their uh, active and inactive um, states. Uh, so you have cosmic, uh, ocean, coastal, and continental. Um, and yeah, then as I said, these are events. Um, the events split up into, uh, yes, three different eras. Um, the Hadean, Archean, and Protozoic era. Um, I think Protozoic is the furthest back in time, and Hadean is most recent, I think. Not 100% certain on that. My knowledge of uh, eras in time is not that great. Um, but one thing I know is the rule book goes into that into a, in a lot of detail. Um, then, uh, yes, the, the placards, these um, on one side you have um, your um, l sort of landform areas. Uh, so this one on, on the top is a radioactive beach. Uh, and then on the other side you have a single-celled, simple life form um, that can... Um, start in that uh, what's the word I'm looking for environment um, and yeah I'll, I'll talk about a bit more about the the gameplay when I actually come to play the game obviously uh, but I have to say I'm quite impressed with the quality of everything um, apart from the the placards that do seem a bit thin. Um, I'll probably see if I can find some sleeves for those to protect them. Um, I, I'll definitely be sleeving the cards. Uh, the rule book. One thing I will say about this is I haven't read the rules yet. Um, I have seen playthroughs and I've watched a, a friend play through the game solo over uh, Google Hangouts and one thing I know is that the the rules are very dense um, and they use a lot of scientific terminology uh, and that can be a bit difficult to get your head around. Um, but once you get past that, the gameplay is actually pretty simple. Um, your discs uh, represent essentially um, enzymes and uh, things that uh, <laughs> hard. To, it's, it's hard to explain. I will. I'll have a good read of the the rules, and when I come to do the the playthrough, I'll I'll try <laughs> to explain things in uh, more clear terms. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to check the component counts on everything because, as I said, I can see there are some partial cubes in here, so I need to count those. Count all my um, these are called biomes, by the way. Um, the little dome 
things. Um, make sure I've got enough of those. Make sure I've got the right number of discs. Uh, and then I'll have a really good read of the rules. Uh, make sure I, I really understand it well. And then I'll come back and probably in a day or two come back and give it a full playthrough and record that. And then I will give you my first thoughts on the game. Welcome back. If you watched any of my other first play videos, uh, you will be expecting at this point uh, for me to cover the, the setup and then a full gameplay run through of the game. And that is what I was expecting to have at this point as well. However, uh, I struggled to find time to record the, the gameplay and when I eventually did find time, um, I had a number of technical and um, one really major gameplay um, issue uh, whilst recording. Um, I'm going to put a picture in picture up there somewhere, I think, top left corner. Hope that's top left. <laughs> um, of what footage I managed to get, um, the, you'll see the quality is really bad. Um, the video recording for some reason stopped part way through, so it's not complete. Uh, the quality downgraded, I think because for some reason my phone, which I used to record the video, decided to go into slow-mo mode um, part way through the recording and that was why um, it stopped recording because I, it ended up with like 19 hours of slow-mo video on my phone so it filled up the storage. Um, yeah, also the, the audio stopped recording at one point um, which wasn't so much of an issue because I have like three audio sources that I record with any um, any of my videos just in case that kind of thing happens um, but I also made a major serious gameplay error and and it was actually that that well sort of I mean I would have realized what had happened when I stopped recording anyway but yeah you know, I got to a point in the gameplay and I realized I'd made this error and so I stopped everything and then when it came to stopping the video recording I looked at my phone and it was it's already stopped <laughs> that's not good so at that point I had no idea how much video I'd recorded anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a sort of second play video at some point in the in the near future that hopefully everything will work properly this time and that will go over all the gameplay aspects. Um, but for now, um, for this video, I will go over what would have been my uh, first play thoughts. Um, at times I'm going to mention gameplay aspects and if you're not familiar with the game those might not make much sense um, but once I've got the second play video recorded I'll put a link in the description so you can pause here go and watch that and then come back and then I'll have the final thoughts uh, or first play thoughts Okay, so overall, the game is mechanically quite simple, um, although there are a lot of little things that you have to remember. Um, these make it very hard to learn. Um, the rules themselves don't help with this. The uh, they're structured into sort of n lettered and numbered sections and paragraphs and uh, 
Um, so you've got like, uh, I can't remember whether it's does the letter first or the, the number. Actually, let me get the rule book out and I'll tell you. Um, yeah, so for example, um, one of the phases is in the game is called the, it will, it's called phase two, and you would, just, you would expect that in the rule book that would be section two, but no, it's section E. <laughs> uh, and then each of the rules within section E have a number assigned to them. So E1 is assigning buyants and catalysts to refugia. Uh, and you know, the rules themselves refer back to, and sometimes even forwards, to other sections in the rules, and the, and they'll just use the 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 letter and the number, and um, and as you can tell from the title of that rule section, um, it uses a lot of very uh, well. The the game is very rooted in the biological sciences, and I say it's a biological simulation game so you would expect that and it therefore uses a lot of um, biological science terminology within the rules um, which is great except it makes the rules really difficult to learn because if you don't know what these things mean you have to learn all that on top of learning the mechanics of the game um, some of the rules are in, there's an appendix that describes all of these, or most of these terms, not all of them. Um, and some of the rules are actually in the appendix. Uh, and the appendix refers to the main rules. And, you know, th there are just lots of individual rules that refer to other individual rules and exceptions to rules and edge cases and lots of detail in there that you have to learn uh, to be able to play the game properly. Uh, a good example of this is one of the uh, Refugium cards is um, it's called the Deep Hot Biosphere refugium and that has a feature on it that no other refugium has um, when you um, assign uh, a biont um, which are kind of like the player markers in the game um, when you assign yeah one of your player markers a biont to this refugia, which is like a an environment, almost. Um, you have to uh, spend a um, a catalyst disc, and that is the only one where you have to do that. None of the others require you to spend anything to be able to place your player marker on it. Um, you just place it and that's it. So, you know, there and there are there are all sorts of other little rules like that and exceptions to rules and which all make it really difficult to learn. Um, you have to go over the rule really carefully, re read it from front to back. Um, there are there's a uh, a series of videos by uh, I need to remember what his YouTube channels. It's I think it's the Grey Board Gamer. Um, he goes over the first edition uh, of the game. The current edition is the second edition, and that's the one I I have. Um, there are very minor rules differences, but he goes over the rules in in a lot of detail. And he's a, that is one source that I personally used to learn the game. Um, 
and I would recommend going and watching his videos uh, because when I do my gameplay video I'm not going to teach the rules um, that's not what I do in my videos uh, I really am just giving you an idea of how the game plays um, so yeah that's the rules themselves uh, there are a number of other aspects of the game which make it hard to learn and to play um, the the graphic design whilst it is aesthetically very nice it's very clean and modern it can be unhelpful at times and this is what led to my gameplay mistake there are mutation cards um, these have two sides to them a <laughs> I need to make sure I get this the right way around because this is the mistake I made they have an a promoted and an unpromoted no promoted and see I, I got it wrong then promoted and unpromoted side and you are meant to start the game with them on their unpromoted side you purchase them to uh, assigned to your organisms and then later you can promote them to their promoted side to a, a further purchase and what I did was shuffle the you, you produce four uh, decks of five mutation cards each during the setup I did that what I failed to notice was that I'd put all the cards uh, promoted side up so for the entire game I was buying promoted mutations rather than unpromoted mutations and it was only really late in the game where I'd got to the point where I felt like I could promote a mutation to get extra benefits from it that I actually realized what I'd done and at that point it was it completely invalidated all that I'd done in the game um, and yeah so, so there are little things like that which when you know what you're looking for it's it is clear that yeah okay you got on the unpromoted side a single DNA strand and the the um, title bar at the top is coloured um, whereas on the promoted side it's a double DNA strand and the title bar, bar is black but that is that is all that there is on the card itself that indicates which way round it goes and it you know obviously now I've made that mistake, I'm probably never going to make it again because I will make absolutely sure. But in your first play, you can easily do that kind of thing. Um, and there's there's nothing on the um, cards that prevent you from doing that. Um, another example is, and this is this is only got even having done a single playthrough, I. I'm still not 100% sure about how um, this aspect works. Um, you have macro-organism cards. Again, they have two sides. One side is um, the... I can't remember what, the, what they call it. Um, it's aquatic and land-based and my understanding but I'm I'm I need to I need to go back to the rules I need to probably check on BGG I'm because I'm not actually certain how you get to the landfall um, land-based 
organisms, do they start as uh, aquatic ones and then get promoted? I think so, but I'm not sure how you do that. Uh, I'm sure that's in the rules somewhere, but again, the rules are so difficult to read that I, I just don't know. Um, and another another example of these, the kind of uh, seeing that you know this is this is what I mean about the the graphic design. There could be something on whichever is the the starting side of the card that tells you how you turn it into the other side. And with the with the mutations, there sort of is, but you only realize there is when you actually know what you're looking for. Um, but on the, yeah, I, I, there might be <laughs> on the, these, but I, because I don't know what I'm looking for, I can't see it, if there is. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, the other good example of unclear um, graphic design is the microorganism cards and um, these are on the back of the, the refugium cards and um, the refugiums are really clear actually you, you have a, a section in the middle which is basically flavor text and uh, an illustration um, the only actual important information on that in that section is little icon that uh, tells you which uh, landform it belongs to um, and then you've got an area at the, the top and an area at the bottom and the two uh, white bars above and below those areas indicate how stuff moves into the top and the bottom areas um, that really clear um, nice bit of iconography and the top right hand corner that um, tells you how you produce a microorganism, a uh, nice bit of iconography at the bottom left that gives you a, a bunch of information. You know, that's all really nice. But the back, the microorganism side, they all have, uh, again, a, an icon at the top, a bit of flavor text. The icon is important. And then there's this bar. I have no idea what the, that is. Is it flavour? It looks to be some kind of chemical process, but it, it uses the iconographic language that is used in other parts of the game. So it, it sort of implies that it's some kind of gameplay feature. If it is, I don't know what it is. And they're all different. Um, I can't find anything in the rules. I think it is just flavour, but I don't know. Um, the rest, the everything below that, again, really clear. So it's it's kind of it has this strange double identity where parts of the graphic design are really clear, parts just ah don't get why they did that you know or you know and or if it's if it is flavor that's nice to have but make it not look like part of the gameplay uh, don't use the the iconographic language of the game in that section I, so yeah, rules don't help you learn the game. The graphics design or play the game, graphics graphic design doesn't help you learn or play the game. Uh, and then we have the components. Um, a lot of the components do multiple things. Uh, the as you've seen already. The, the placards have two sides, you need to know what side they're on. That's fairly straightforward. Likewise, you know, I mean, obviously I made that mistake. Once you know about it, 
you know, it's sort of clear, sort of, <laughs> uh, which side is which. Um, but the cubes and the discs, they all, they both have different meanings depending on where they are and in some cases depending on what colour they are. Uh, so for example cubes when they're on refugia are um, mana uh, when they are on microorganisms they are chromosomes and then when they're on macroorganisms they are organs if I remember rightly um, there is a table in the rule book that tells you what the things are in the various different places uh, and this, see, this is, illustrates just how difficult it is to find stuff in the, there we go, to find stuff in the rules because it's, you know, I didn't know where <laughs> to go immediately to find that table in the rules. I mean, I'm sure with more play I will get used to where that is and I'll learn the stuff in the table. Um, but yeah, there's three columns, uh, cubes, discs, bionts, um, oh yeah, bionts have different meanings depending on where they are as well, um, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows, uh, and then, uh, yeah, some of the, the cells in the table filled in indicating what those things are, so cube for example, uh, when it's on a, uh, yeah, so, as I said, refugium, mana, bacterium, and uh, so microorganisms, they're chromosomes, macroorganisms, they're organs, uh, mutation cards can have cubes on, and they are then mutation chromosomes, uh, oh yeah, when it's on a microorganism, it's a an organ chromosome, uh, and then there are parasite cards, and then it's a diseased chromosome. Uh, discs can be vitamins when they're on uh, organisms or antioxidants, and which they are depends on what colour they are. Uh, on refugium, they're enzymes, and when they're in your tableau, um, they're catalysts. And the rules all refer to just these words. It doesn't say, um, well, it doesn't. It does in places say something like enzyme disc, uh, but most of the time it will just say enzyme. Um, and again, the the, do the domes are. Uh, Chromosomes, um, bionts, uh, foreign genes, trophic bionts, and endosymbionts, uh, or endosymbiont chromosome bionts, when they're on organisms, and which of those they are depends on whether it's a microorganism or a macroorganism. Uh, when they're on parasites, they're chromosome bionts or foreign gene um, bionts, uh, when they're on refugium they're mana bionts and when they're in the tableau they are just an unassigned bionts. So yeah, the three really sort of simple but <laughs> very complex, very overloaded components in the game that are used for so many different things and that again makes it really difficult to learn the game and to it it's not 
it's not something that gets in the way when you're playing the game because it doesn't actually really matter what you call things you just need to know that this is how it behaves when it's on there um, but yeah learning the game it becomes complicated because you read enzyme and you've got to think okay that's a disc that's a disc that's on a refugium okay I now know what a what I'm looking at, what the context of this rule is, and yeah, just makes it more difficult to learn. Um, so, gameplay itself, um, one of the complaints I see a lot about the game, um, and a lot of uh, Phil Eklund's games, especially the scientific simulation games is that they're very random and certainly there are lots of random elements there are dice there are random cards there are events that are uh, that you draw randomly or you draw from a random or semi-random deck um, however there is quite a lot of mitigation in the game. That's basically what the the discs do. They are things that mitigate randomness. Mutations as well um, can help mitigate randomness because they, they give your organisms um, abilities. Um, once you've got organisms, the cubes that represent um, chromosomes or organs also infer abilities on the organism that help mitigate that randomness. Um, so in practice I personally feel that the, the game isn't too random. Um, the, ran the, yeah, the randomness that is there is there for a reason and I I find it very thematic. Um, the the processes that uh, go on or, or went on on the early Earth whilst life was developing, which is what this game is simulating, was very random, very chaotic, and yeah, that's what the the events and the dice are simulating. So. It works for me, and as I said, you can you can mitigate all that. Uh, obviously, I've I've only played the game the once, um, but even from that single play, I can see that with more plays, you'll get better at um, knowing when to use the different things that you can use to mitigate randomness. Um, so yeah, that for me is not a big issue. Uh, the the solo play solo play is interesting. Uh, you you essentially play two players um, working cooperatively against a parasitic or two parasitic AI players. Um, it's quite puzzly, uh, but because of the uh, random elements in the game, the the order that you your uh, the mutations become available, the order that the events come out, the dice rolls. Um, doesn't feel solvable uh, so it yeah I I think that's that is really nice the I haven't played I mean I have only played the once so I haven't played multiplayer yet um, there is a both cooperative and competitive multiplayer modes the sort of the default way you play is competitive um, I'm not sure how different that feels. I suspect it 
feels a lot different to the solo game but the mechanics of the solo game are I, I, I don't want to give a percentage but a, a large proportion of the mechanics are exactly the same in the solo and the multiplayer um, the the section in the rule book rule book for the solo uh, variant is really short it's I don't think it's even a, a whole page um, and yeah it's a 50 odd page rule book so yeah the, the majority of the, the rules in here apply to the solo as much as they do to either the competitive or cooperative multiplayer um, so yeah solo mode's really nice um, with the the two player players you uh, you can use those together to um, improve your odds of mitigating the randomness to get life produced and hopefully win the game and uh, so on. Um, the one thing I I really like uh, it's it's not it's not a short game um, you know it's not like a 15 to 30 minute game I think with experience and repeated play you can get the gameplay down to I'd like to say you could probably get it down to an hour um, your first play is going to take longer than that and it's going to take significantly longer than that just because it's it's so difficult to wrap your head around the rules and the the gameplay itself um, but one of the things I really like about the the BIOS series of games and currently there are there are two in the series and there's a, a third one um, coming in the future um, is that you can play them as a campaign so you start with BIOS Genesis uh, hopefully win that take your uh, macro organisms from the end of BIOS Genesis into BIOS Megafauna um, develop those into more sophisticated life forms um, and new species and all sorts in that uh, and then uh, you can take the results of that game and uh, use that to start uh, BIOS Origins, I think it's going to be called, uh, which I believe, but I'm not 100% certain, sort of goes from the, the start of BIOS Megafauna, I think takes you from the start of um, your multicellular life, which you produce in BIOS Genesis, through to the beginnings of intelligent life. And then Origins takes sort of intelligent life all the way through to a sort of about modern day, maybe slightly into the future. Um, and so, yeah, you can play this whole sort of campaign, a series of three games, uh, which I'm really looking forward to being able to do. Uh, the um, yeah one other sort of I don't know I I'm not really sure whether this is really a negative or a positive for me um, but the going back to the rules themselves um, they uh, Phil Eklund um, likes to use what he calls living rules which means already this rule book is out of date there is a new 
version of the second edition rules available to download. Uh, and from what I've read, it only makes very small changes. And you can play the game with just the rules that are in this rule book. That's fine. But obviously, if you're going to play the campaign, <laughs> then... Um, okay, Megafauna is already out, so that's based on, you know, taking stuff that's been produced with the rules in this rulebook and taking it forwards in that game. But when Origins come out, um, it is almost certainly going to be... It's going to assume that you're playing Genesis and Megafauna... Uh, using whatever are the living rules at the point that the origins rules are locked down. So you will have to, if you want to do that, you're probably going to have to keep up with the living rules and and play by those rules rather than the, the ones that are actually in the rulebook. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure yet whether I think that's a good idea or a bad idea. I can sort of see the benefits of doing it that way, but there are also lots of negatives um, to it. Um, the one last thing I think I will say at this point is the game comes with a nice reference card. Um, from memory, uh, this was discussed during the Kickstarter for the game, and I believe this was something that was produced for the uh, first edition by a BGG user, and then Sierra Madre Games um, took his uh, file um, improved, I don't, I don't know if they've improved the layout, but it's got all the the proper icons, it, it uses all the, um, it, the graphic design matches the rest of the game, and I, it's been updated to the second edition rules. Um, this, during gameplay, is really useful it once you've once you've gone through the rules at least once you can well I found in most instances if I wasn't sure about something I could refer to the reference card there were a few times I then had to look up things in the rules but that didn't happen often the reference card is really useful and I think the more you play, the more you'll just use the reference card. Um, there are a lot of steps to, there are, uh, was it five? Yes, there are five phases to the game. And um, most of those phases have multiple steps within them. And that's where this comes in really handy because you can just go, okay, phase one, step one, step two, step three, and so on. And then it, it has all the, the icons with a, a little brief description. So if you get an icon that you haven't seen for a while, you can quickly look and go, oh yeah, it's that. I know how to do that. And so yeah, that, that's really useful. It's probably one of the best <laughs> parts of the, the game in terms of what things that help you actually play and learn the game. Um, overall, I really like it, despite all its failings. Well, failings isn't really the right word. All the, all the negative things that I've already gone over, despite all that, it's a really good game. It's really thinky. You have to think through how you're going to uh, use your bionce 
on the refugia that come out because of random events to best um, manage your odds of producing what you need or getting the roles that you need to produce the stuff that you need, which is basically organised manner, to then get a microorganism that has a chance of surviving the um, both the um, events on the event cards and stuff that happens according to dice rolls. Um, to then give you, uh, oh, and, and which mutations to buy, which come out randomly, to uh, give that microorganism the best chance of becoming a macroorganism. Um, and you need, for the, for the macroorganisms, you need certain combinations of organs, or no, chromosomes, to to become specific types of uh, macroorganism. So you're managing all that with this goal to getting macroorganisms at the at the end. And it's this whole chain of decisions and you know the, the decisions you make during the first round matter. <laughs> the decisions you make halfway through matter just as much, if not more, than those you made right at the beginning and possibly even the other way around sometimes because um, in the gameplay, in the, the first play that I did, um, one of my microorganisms, um, it was, it came from, if I remember rightly, it came from one of the refugia that came out in the first round, um, which I concentrated on getting uh, biots on and enzymes on so that I could get as much uh, mana organized on there so that when I then flipped it, the uh, microorganism would have the best chance of survival. And I concentrated on getting the, the right uh, mutations, of course they were slightly more powerful mutations than I should have been assigning to it, but, um, but yeah, I was, I was working to get stuff that would help it survive and then it made it up until the point at which I realised I'd been doing that wrong. Of course, had I not been buying uh, promoted mutations, it probably wouldn't have survived. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I may have. It, it's. I may have hadn't been able to make it survive, and, th and that that's sort of the point I'm trying to get at is that every single decision at every single point matters, matters a lot, and that is what I really like about the game. Um, I can see myself playing this a lot. I want to play it enough to get the, the game time down to, you know, an hour or so. Uh, and yeah, when I've learnt Megafauna, I want to be able to take my, uh, let's say, Amphibians through from BIOS Genesis along with some trilobites into megafauna, turn them into dinosaurs, have those dinosaurs become intelligent and then take those on into um, Origins and I, th I think Origins sort of takes you to the point where you're leaving the planet uh, and yeah, I think that would be really fun, uh, very 
interesting to play that whole arc of games. Uh, so yeah, really like it. Okay, I think I think that's pretty much all I want to say about Bias Genesis. Uh, as I said, I will produce another gameplay video or a, a gameplay video um, in the near future. Once I've got that, I'll put a link in the description, and so you you can go and watch that. And. I'm not sure when, but at some point I'm going to do a first play of Bass Megafauna as well. Hopefully that records properly. <laughs> and again, once that, up, once that is up, I will also add a link to that in the description to this video because the, the games are linked or can be linked. Um, other than that, I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing next on the channel. Um, I have recently uh, added a, or created a Facebook group um, for the channel um, alongside the page that already existed. Uh, again, links in the description. I would be very grateful if you could join that group um, I would like to get some interesting discussion started in there at the moment it doesn't have many members because um, I don't even have many <laughs> subscribers so again if you're not a subscriber of the, the channel please subscribe uh, please um, subscribe to my blog on BGG, where I will post new uh, videos about new videos. Um, I'm probably going to do some of the stuff on there as well. I haven't quite decided how to use that yet. Uh, there's also Google Plus community. Um, if, if you use Google Plus, please join that. Um, again, links in the description. And yeah, like, share, subscribe, all the usual things. And I will see you for another video at some point in the future. <laughs>